Uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Thailand. Uh, many of you guys, I think, I'm, I'm sure, you know, uh, travel from uh, far, far places. So I am uh, Torun Shikdar. Uh, I'm a content writer and marketer. And uh, my topic is uh, going to be uh, writing for your audience, learning the art of user intent content. You know, there are many businesses, uh, like uh, nowadays, I have, I have been researching for a few days, few months, few years, uh, that uh, businesses are struggling to create user intent content. And that is how my idea came of, you know, uh, 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 maintaining, letting the user know how you can generate better user intent content for your business. So this is going to be my uh, talking points. Uh, the, the session might sound a little robotic right now because uh, there's not enough time for me to explain everything, but I'll try to do everything. After, after the session, you can uh, fire out your uh, questions to me. Uh, okay, the first thing, uh, first thing is uh, about you know, knowing your audience. Uh, how, how you can know your audience? I mean, while, while you are writing your uh, content uh, for your uh, user, you got to know your audience first. And the most important thing of knowing your audience first is to uh, write one reader in mind. Like, if you have, you, uh, if you have, uh, uh, like, uh, your, your audience is a class five years old or home instead mom, uh, then you have to uh, make that mindset, right? Write that content based on that. So, the next thing is, uh, the fixed income investment is one word, like you can, you can let your user know. But if your audience is uh, a different base of audience, this, this uh, fixed income investment might, might be a difficult, difficult sentence to swallow for them. So instead you can write, instead of fixed income investment, you can write for your uh, user base, bonds. That will be more, much easier for them to follow. Also, similar to that, you know, equities, this might be a bit, bit, bit difficult for them to swallow. You can change it to stocks and shares. This will be much more uh, easier to follow. Also, the capital, you can change it to your original investment. The next, next thing is uh, figuring out what, uh, the, um, what most of your readers want to know. And this is how you can do, like, if you, if you check out this uh, uh, para, I mean, announcement, this is, announcement is uh, for a student, for a student of a university. And this is how the uh, 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 announcement goes. The dean of Bangkok University announced that today the faculty of the university will travel to two icon all icon see on Friday for a collo colloquium to teach new methods of mathematics. Dr. Thai Wang Li the famous mathematician and two other members from the same group will speak at the event. Now, this is an announcement for a student. Now, if you don't know your audience, you know, is it, is it the right way to convey your message to them? I don't think so. So, uh, this, is, this is the same, same message in a different, a different uh, way, in a concise way. But what, what the message matters is that uh, the, it's, it's for the student. So, you, sh you shouldn't write your uh, message like this. You should. You should simply say, there will be no class on Friday. This is the more important thing they need to, need, need to read, need to know. So everything, everything you can, that's, that's what they needed to know. And all you, all you were saying is all those things for the faculty members and other, other stuff. So this, this is very uh, not important for the readers. So since it was for the student, so you can just simply say there will be no class on Friday. As simple as that. Next, uh, so what do we do before starting a content? Uh, writing, you start writing. You can uh, ask three questions. You can ask, uh, who is my reader? What do I want them to do? And uh, why should they do it? So when, when you write about business, uh, whenever, when you write about a product or something, or we write about features and benefits. Sometimes we, we, we get confused, uh, mixed features with benefits. So we shouldn't do that. So this is why, because the features is what uh, define the elements of the product. Uh, what it does, how it works, the technical specs. This is not the benefits. The benefits is the result of their using it. So you should uh, structure the content based on that. Performing the so what test. Okay, this is a very interesting test uh, we can perform. As a, as a writer, you know, 
uh, you got to ask a few questions uh, while you're writing content. So if you write this, the new blood pressure medicine that just got launched con contains uh, angiotensin to receptor blockers. So you, you can just keep it there and there will be questions of many, many readers. Oh, why, why do we care? Why do we need it? Right. So then you can uh, change it to, it helps relax, you can get to the next point, like it helps relax your veins and arteries to lower your blood pressure and make it easier for uh, your heart pump to blood. So okay, so many of them will uh, find this more, more relevant, to them, relevant to them. But still there will, there will, there will be people like, oh, why should you care? There will be, uh, uh, then, then again you can write, anti, uh, antiotensin to receptor blockers will lower blood pressure by 15 points after eight weeks. So this is something, this is more, more something they will be looking for, they will, they're, they're looking for. Still there will be people who will say, okay, so it, it, it it's, uh, uh, reduces the points by 15 percent, 15 points. So what, why, why doesn't it re reduce for 20 or 30 percent, uh, 30 points? So you got, for, for answering those, that question, you can simply, you know, it's okay now, okay? Okay, so this is the last part. Lowering your blood pressure by 15 points will add, potentially add 10 years to your life. So this is something we all can relate. Every readers can relate, right? So this is how you should uh, structure your features from, uh, from first, uh, first sentence to the last sentence. Next uh, is how to keep the attention of your readers. The only way to do is the, to make the content personally relevant to them. So this is, this is an uh, email from an HR, and a, a study suggests that we, we tend to read our uh, uh, email, in, email or content in F pattern. So in, in order to that, if, if you put your import, important messages in the middle, it will, there will be very difficult for them to scan and follow. So what, what we can do is that start with the most important message on each paragraph. So that since they follow the F pattern, so it's important for you to put your uh, uh, important message on uh, each paragraph at the first beginning. So this is how you can answer your email. In the, the same email, you can uh, uh, place your uh, important, most important part at the top. Then you can answer uh, subsequently. Okay, this is, this is how we should follow the inverted pyramid, follow, pyramid uh, format. The most important part at the beginning, top, then the less, less important, then less, then the least one. Okay, this is one of the real life example of failed copywriting. Like it was, it was done by Network Rail. So the, the, they have given a note like useful information for the passengers. Uh, it's, it's, it says King Cross Station are committed to assisting passengers with reduced mobility. Now, the most important thing they missed out is that this is not the, this is not the message they want, or the passengers to know. The, the passengers need to know the lower part, the small, small uh, yeah. if you require any assistance, please speak to a member of staff or go to the customer. This part should have, should have been highlighted in the font, that this thing is, is less important. Another, another fail example, like today is the day we take the stairs. This is from a health organization who was, who was, putting, uh, uh, was promoting, you know, to write uh, or to let, let the user know, uh, let the uh, people know what they can do. Uh, this is also a failed, failed uh, copywriting uh, example. Like there are people, you, you have already neglected one of, the peop one of the section of the people, like the people who are, who are, who are already in, uh, wheelchairs, they, they can't really, you know, uh, use the stairs. So they have totally neglected one section of the group uh, while writing. They didn't even think about uh, uh, those, those uh, they didn't even think about those uh, people while writing these copies. Okay, so the next thing is uh, writing less uh, by, saying, uh, by saying more. There are three reasons to write less because there are uh, now nowadays the attention span is very low, so you got the readers are really busy. Also, the diversity and inclusion is there. Honesty you need. Also, the you, you need to you know when you uh, structure your content, when you finish your content, 
you, as a, when you get to the editor mode, you need to cut down 20% of your content uh, from the base. Avoid redundant words, like the example, we are a worldwide global company. Worldwide and global is same, so you should not use the same, same word in the same sentence. Avoid flabby phrases, at this moment in time, you can simply write now. So it's, uh, the best writers edit their content with a knife, not a pen. So it's, it's, it's what I follow. It's very difficult for me to edit my content because I make a lot of research, you know, hours of research, and after that I start a content. But when I get to the, when I get to the ed editing mode, it's, it really gets difficult for me to edit it. But uh, I, I have to you know, edit that content you know, for the betterment of it. So how to get your message across to the uh, widest audience possible? Just be simplistic, as simplistic as possible, uh, without using you know jargon and l less complex word. Uh, this is the, this is one of the example, right? Like one one part is uh, with jargon and complexity. The same thing written in a simple manner. You guys can follow. Next, uh, another example is that uh, the defendant having taken an oath to testify truthfully in a proceeding before a grand jury of the United States, knowingly made a false material declaration. So this is uh, another example where they have used flabby phrases like long, uh, complex words and stuff. You can simply change this by saying the defendant lied in the court. You can say it by in one small sentence. How should you explain to convey your message? Okay. Don't try to act too clever. Uh, your uh, audience is, uh, uh, don't think you are, you are the smartest person. Your audience is even smarter nowadays. Avoid using jargon. Be confident and clear about what you are going to write. If you can't explain your idea to a six-year-old, you don't understand yourself. That's what Einstein said. So you've got to make sure that your content is as simplistic as possible. Even a six-year-old can understand it and uh, follow. Art of crafting sent sentences that uh, sing. This, this is uh, especially important for you know, professional writers and as well as you know, technical writers. Okay. So what is the number one uh, thing, habit, that turning your readers off? It is, uh, it is this, uh, a long sentence like, like, like this, which is very difficult to follow. Instead of that, instead of writing in one sentence like this, para like this, you can simply break down into small pieces, make it simple, simpler. So 24 word is your uh, upper limit. You know, uh, you can use long sentences when your readers say, like if you have, if you have, uh, uh, like, uh, if, if, you, if you have written 12 or 15 letter, 15 uh, word sentence, uh, after, after uh, two, three, Paragraph, you can, uh, uh, once the reader is a uh, little rested, you can uh, uh, write a long sentence of more than 25, 24 words. Uh, as you know, no one will ever complain that something is too easy to read. Uh, one, uh, one more thing, uh, how to incorporate, sto incorporate stories into your business writing. I'll be quickly finishing it, it's uh, almost there. Uh, so uh, in order to incorporate your stories into your uh, business writing, uh, you've got to follow uh, these five steps. Show, don't tell. Tickle your reader's uh, mind. Use verbs, not noun. Bring your data to life. Also use metaphor as much as possible in your content. So this is how we can structure your story. Uh, once upon a time, there was an island of little people. Every day, they saw their living standards go down. One day, someone asked them to uh, overthrow the government. Because of that, they, uh, they were given a voice, and they used their voice to say no. Until finally, they were free. This is how we can structure a story. This is the topic, Evans. I think the last part is my motivation drive. I'm almost uh, to the end of my session. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I, have, I, have, I have had people, you know, uh, coming to me after, even after uh, tw two, year, two years of writing a content, 
they have reached out to me and uh, uh, they have said, yes, I, my content has helped me uh, solve the problem. That is what gives, gives me immense pleasure, you know, to uh, write even more, write even better, research for them. That is what I, uh, I have been following, you know, I have been taking as inspiration for myself and for my motivation. So I'm almost done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, if you have any question, just let me know, uh, you know, because uh, there is no time for uh, uh, question and answer. But you can stay connected if you have any ideas to share or you, you just want to simply uh, stay connected with me. You can let me know. And also if you have question related to my question or feed, feedback related to my session, just let me know. Thank you.